Hi everyone, Julie here. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. So this week I'm going to run through using the FX panel over on DxO Photo Lab. So I'm going to continue working through the panels. Um, I have skipped the geometry one just for the moment because um, I want to do something else with that. But I thought I would jump into the FX panel. So um, the first thing that comes up in the FX panel, I'm not sure why it's first up, but I guess we'll go through that. So you can add in your own watermark. Um, going back to clicking on the little question marks, it gives you a little bit of information about um, whether you can have an image or text. Um, if you are having text, your font, your style, color, talks about orientation, position, scale, margins, opacity, etc. So what I am going to do is I'm going to jump in and grab a digital logo. Uh, now I want to use, I'm going to use a PNG um, because it is transparent. Now it is popped up here. Um, I could if I wanted to go into text, you can type what you want, pick the font that you want. Um, the color etc but I have chosen an image so I'm going to decide there's a little grid here where you want it if you want it in the top left right bottom middle whatever you can scale it up and down you can give yourself a bit of a margin so if you want to move it say you want to move it up from the top and the bottom margin you can do that and you can move it over from the side. So even if you wanted to go, oops, that was a bit high, not what I meant to do. Let's try that again. So I've got it one, I'm not sure what the one is in reference to, probably pixels, um, but even that doesn't make sense. So maybe that's a hundred pixels. Um, but you don't have to, you can have that set at zero and you can move it around. Um, of course, you can change the blending mode. So if you want to have it with different blending modes, if you have a JPEG that is, um, you want it to blend in a little more, you could do it that way. And of course, you can create a preset. So I'm just going to jack. So that's business oh, logo, can't spell, um, and I've called it black left um, because it is my black logo. I also have a white one and it's on the left hand side. Can't get any easier than that. So then I can add in presets as we go. So when we move over to a turn that one off so that's putting my logo in so let's have a look at some of the other stuff that we can do um, moving on from that one so you can apply different filters um, and there's different um, filters which I have got from the film pack um, I'm not sure so this isn't film pack 7 so I'm not sure if these will be um, there without film pack 7 but if you have got film pack 7 then definitely you've got it um, but these I think are just standard filters so they could come anyway so you've got orange yellows um, warm tones there's a whole heap that you can play with I'm just going to pick the brown one to start with and of course you can then adjust your opacity and I'm just giving a slight warm tint to it so um, the filter lets you simulate front of lens photographic color filters so if I was to put a filter or a gel onto my image that would simulate it so that's what that is now you don't have to use the filter in fact you don't have to use anything in the FX panel but um, there are some really nice filters that you can do with it so if I come in that's the before and that's the after so as you can see it has warmed it up a little bit um, the next one is grain um, so you can add, um, if we click on that, it allows you to add 
um, fine tuned silver halide grain which is quite nice compared to um, the fake grain that's added in other programs which quite frankly looks can look really bad sometimes um, so you've got um, positive film negative film you've got black and white grain and you can add in there um, it comes up with different um, film types so you can go through and you could pick 400 1600 um, I might go for a 400 even though it's a bit strong if I zoom in but what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the opacity right down but it's going to give me that lovely um, sort of more of a vintage look um, if I have a look at the original photo and then come back in here just adding you know a touch of grain to it can um, really make a difference and you can change the size of the, the grain as well Oops, let's click on the right one okay vignetting so if I go back to fit the screen um, I can come in and play with the vignetting on here now I can so you've got the intensity of the vignetting um, if you go all the way to the left and if you go all the way to the right that'll give you black or white um, you can s select the center point so um, for instance I'm going to add just a touch of dark around the edge I don't want to go all the way because it's too much I just want to get my viewer to look into the center of my image and I can pick where I want the center of it to be which I will pop about here um, if you go into advanced settings you can change the roundness so let's just go all the way to the black so you can see what I'm talking about so I can change the roundness of the image and I can change the transition so how much it fades off basically I can have almost a sharp edge or I can go back back to having it quite um, soft so um, that's playing around with that on the vignette so I just want a little bit of a vignette on that one I don't want too much obviously if I go the other way then I have white um, but I just want to go back to about the 22 okay then we have blur so you get vignetting and soft focusing here so if I um, pick where I want the center to be I'm going to go into soft focus so what I want to do now hopefully if I can zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about um, I want to try and get the um, newspaper into a little bit of blur now I've gone over the top um, and bring in some diffusion so if I have that all the way to the left as you can see it's really really blurry and if I bring it in I start to bring my model into focus so if I compare before and compare afterwards it has just softened around the edges so if I play with the vignetting again I can um, have quite a bit of blur around my model and I'm going to pick oops the center point in her face um, it's quite intense there and it's not I don't want it to be that much but I did just want to show you what it looks like when you start playing with it again um, you can play with the transition or the the softness how much it feathers um, you can play with the roundness and the diffusion so there's lots of different things that you can play with don't forget to click your advanced settings um, the blur allows you to reduce the sharpness of your image um, while still being artistic um, vignetting lets you blur the edges of your image um, the soft focus blurs the whole image um, it gives you the 
effect of using a diffusion filter um, so everything's there um, all your explanations um, and it's a matter of remembering to set your middle point um, and playing with it that way so I love using the blur um, it has just softened off the edge of the image um, so if I just go to fit to screen again um, it's just really really sort of nice soft it's bringing the light and the sharpness into my model space just remember to um, close that effect off before you move on to the next one sometimes you've got to hit a little close button there okay so frame um, if you click on that um, it's pretty self-explanatory adds a frame allows you to change the size of it the position of it to rotate it you can apply toning to it um, you can do all sorts of things there's lots of different frames that you can add in um, so there's white on black black on black etc 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 so um, there's those that you can go play with as well um, then there is textures so this gives you um, different textures that you can apply over the top it allows you to che check the um, strength of the intensity to randomize it apply toning to it and things like that um, so you can pick something that you'd like to play with um, of course you can always drop the strength down um, you can apply toning to the image um, don't forget to just try the randomizer to see what it thinks works quite good with it um, there's lots of different things that you can play with in here um, wood lines droplets there's stains um, this one's quite a good one I go to 100% so it kind of I've gone into that vintage toning but now it almost looks like I've got a bit of um, damage to my photo as well so that's another one that's really cool to play with um, and then last but not least is light leaks so there's quite a few different light leaks that you can play with um, there's some really cool effects that you can do on it you can apply um, toning to those as well um, you can choose the position you can go into randomize and you can drop the intensity so I might just see if I can find That looks pretty cool all right so I'm gonna leave that there um, so that's using the FX panel in photo lab 7 um, thanks for joining me for this week and I will see you next week in YouTube don't forget to like and subscribe bye for now